Okay, so in this video we are going to talk about Jeroboam and the actual split where uh, the kingdom of God's people split into Israel in the north and Judah in the south. We've already talked about Rehoboam who was king over Judah and today we're going to talk about Jeroboam who became the first king of Israel. Let's remember that in 1 Kings chapter 11 and verse 4 that this whole thing happened because Solomon was not faithful to God. He, he turned away his heart after other gods. His heart was not wholly true to the Lord his God as was the heart of David his father. And so I can look down at my Bible and see in verse 11, this is what God said to Solomon, because he was not faithful, I will surely tear the kingdom from you and will give it to your servant. And so we're going to go to 1 Kings 11 and verse 26, and we're going to meet the servant that God is going to give the kingdom to. 1 Kings 11 and verse 26, we meet the first king of the northern kingdom of Israel, Jeroboam the son of Nebat. Jeroboam is going to be highlighted in red because he's a king of Israel in the north. And I won't always do the whole title of this person, like this one is Jeroboam the son of Nebat, but this one's going to get the whole title because uh, a couple reasons. Jeroboam and what he does becomes such a problem that we're going to see it all the way through the whole rest of this story. You're going to see Jeroboam the son of Nebat over and over and over again. And so Jeroboam the son of Nebat is going to be highlighted red. But also, later on in the golden years of Israel's history, there is another Jeroboam, and we're going to call him Jeroboam the second. So Jeroboam the son of Nebat. Uh, we're going to make a note in the margin of our Bible next to... Jeroboam. So let's go over to the margin of my Bible here, and I'm going to do two things. I'm going to write number one, because he is the first king of Israel. It's going to help me keep it straight when I open up to any of these uh, chapters. I can say, read Israel, what number was he? This is where I am on the timeline. He's number one. I also want to do this. I want to write number one, and I want to write First Dynasty. Let me show you why I want to write the dynasty numbers on these kings. I showed you this timeline that we're going to be using throughout this, uh, throughout the divided kingdom, throughout this study. In the bottom, in Judah, um, all of the kings that we're going to read about with one little fluke, all of the kings are descended from David. And so there's, there's one dynasty. David received a promise from God. You and your sons are going to sit on my throne forever. And so David's son Solomon became king after him. And Rehoboam's son, uh, Solomon's son, Rehoboam became king after him. And, and along that straight line across the bottom, it's just descendants of David. And that line goes all the way to Jesus uh, to the present day. Jesus is a descendant of David and he is king because of this great promise that God made to David. And so there's just one dynasty across the south in Judah. But in the north, let me, let me go backwards here so you can see the whole timeline and what we're going to be looking at. In the north, it's just whoever has the biggest stick at the time is going to be king. And so Next to some of these different kings, you see Jeroboam the first, Jeroboam the son of Nebat, has a son Nadab. And then Nadab has a general in his army named Baasha. And Baasha says, you've been king long enough, I'm going to be king now. Uh, and so Baasha just takes the throne from the guy who is the king. And so you see the superscript number two, after Baasha's name. And, and here's the main reason why I'm tracking dynasties. It's not just, you know, trivial information to know. Look at the different dynasties as you see the kings across the top of that, that timeline. Baasha, Zimri, Tibni, Omri's number five, Jehu's number six. 
especially look at the last downward slide of Israel's history. You've got seven, eight, nine, ten. The different dynasties in Israel represent chaos. In Judah and Jerusalem, they're not doing things right most of the time. But at least you know who the king's going to be. For most of the time, whoever the king on the throne is, his son is going to be king because God said it and we're going to respect it. But in the north, it's just every man for himself. Whoever happens to have the most power at the time is going to be king. And so I want to know where we are on that timeline and the dynasties because I want to feel the chaos. And I promise as, as we go through this and you start to see the dynasties, you're going to feel just total chaos with uh, the different dynasties. And so in 1 Kings 11.26, we've got Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. We've got a note in our margin that he is number one. We know he's number one of Israel because it's red highlighter. And we know that he is the first dynasty. Here's something. I told you that uh, I have these highlighters to help me see important things on the page. I want something to, to jump out at me. Look down at verse 37. 1 Kings 1137. This is such a huge deal. When most of us think about Jeroboam, probably we think, oh, Israel, all these guys are losers. This is all bad in, in the north. This is not gonna, this is not gonna work. But here's the thing: it didn't have to be that way. In verses 37 and 38, this is the promise that God made to Jeroboam. And I will take you. And you shall reign over all that your soul desires. And you shall be king over Israel. And if you will listen to all that I command you. And will walk in my ways. And do what is right in my eyes. By keeping my statutes and my commandments. As David my servant did. I will be with you. And will build you a sure house. As I built for David. And I will give Israel to you. I can't hardly emphasize what a big deal that is. So what I like to do is I'll take verses 37 and 38, and I'm going to highlight them in yellow. Because when I look down at the page in my Bible, what I want to see is that this promise that God made to Jeroboam, it's, it's almost the same promise that God made to David, if you will just serve me, if you will just do the things that I told you to do and not do the things that I told you not to do, if you will just serve me, then you, you'll be a dynasty. We won't have all these dynasties and all this chaos in the north. The whole nation is going to suffer because Jeroboam did not do the things that God told him to do. And so I want to make sure that I see that promise. Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 12 and verse 19. That's the next thing I'm going to mark in my Bible. 1 Kings chapter 12 and 19, we've already passed where Rehoboam uh, was the means of God fulfilling this promise to Solomon. I'm going to take the kingdom away from you, uh, or at least the bigger part of the kingdom. I'm going to take it away from you. And and so Rehoboam is a jerk and he raises the taxes on all of these people. And, and so this is really important. Verse 19. This is the actual split. So Israel has been in rebellion against the house of David to this day. That's going to be highlighted red because it's the actual start of Israel. Look, look at my timeline. I don't know if you can see my mouse on the screen here. That actual split where there's a fork in the road, that's the verse that we just highlighted. The verse that we just highlighted is that spot. And sometimes I like to do this, not just because I love names and dates. It's not just trivia for the sake of trivia. It's going to help me to know where we are in history and how long God is merciful and patient with some of these people. So... In the margin of my Bible, next to verse 19, I'm going to write a note that this happened in 931 BC. I'm not going to track the dates of all of the different kings throughout Israel and Judah, but this is an important... If I was teaching a class and there was going to be a test at the end of this class, I would say, write down 931 because that's going to be on the test. You need to remember that this 
split happened in 931. Let's jump down to verse 25. One of my main goals throughout this thing is just to help us navigate, to know who the kings are, where to find them in the Bible, and keep it all straight. But every once in a while, there's a story that's worth paying attention to. God told Jeroboam, if you will just serve me, you and your sons can be king forever in Israel. And and that's the way that it's going to go. But Jeroboam was self-conscious about the people leaving him. Even though God made the promise to him, he was self-conscious about it. He said, no, they're going to go back to Jerusalem and they're going to want to be a part of David's kingdom. And so start reading with me in verse 25, 1 Kings 12, 25. Then Jeroboam built Shechem in the hill country of Ephraim and lived there. And he went out from there and built, built Penuel. And Jeroboam said in his heart, now the kingdom will turn back to the house of David. If this people go up to offer sacrifices in the temple of the Lord at Jerusalem, uh, parentheses, like God told them to, that's what they were supposed to do. If they do what God told them to do, then the heart of this people will turn again to their Lord. I can't really see how that's a bad thing, but he wanted his power, so whatever. The people will turn to the Lord, to Rehoboam, king of Judah, and they will kill me and return to Rehoboam, king of Judah. So the king took counsel, and this is what he did. This is such a great story that you can mark it in your Bible in a way that's really easy to follow it and understand it. What did Jeroboam do that was wrong? In verse 28, the king took counsel and made two calves of gold. Underline red. You are not supposed to make graven images. It's one of the commandments that God told to his people. And so he made two calves of gold. Jump down to verse 29. He set one in Bethel, underline red, and the other he put in Dan, underline red. In verse 30, then this thing became sin for the people went as far as Dan to be before one. In verse 31, he also made temples on the high places. Um, Verse 31, temples on the high places. Underline in red. There was only supposed to be one temple, and it was supposed to be in Jerusalem. Jeroboam put one in Bethel. He put one in Dan. He spread them out all across the high places. Uh, It says, and he appointed priests from among all the people. Underline red. If you're familiar with the Bible story, you will know that God said the priests of his people are supposed to only come from the tribe of Levi. And the high priests are only supposed to come from a specific lineage. And so for Jeroboam to say, no, this is who our priests are going to be. Uh, this is this is him not doing what God told him to do. I put a note in the margin of my Bible next to that one also. There's, there's something I want you to see, so let's do that. Let's make a note next to where he appointed priest for all the people. Not only did he say you don't have to be a Levite in order to be a priest, he told the Levites who were supposed to be priests, that they had to leave Israel. That's not in this story, Uh, but here's where you can find it. Um, 2 Chronicles 11 and verses 13 through 17. That's going to be a blue pen in the margin of my Bible because it's a parallel passage. And the blue pen says, hey, if I read this story in the Chronicles account, I can get a little bit more information here. He didn't only appoint priests from people who were not Levites. He told the Levites that they had to leave. And so it's like a double whammy. This is just extra wrong. I also do this. This one is not in blue pen because it's not a parallel account, but it is a reference to this story in 2 Chronicles 33 and verses 6 through 12. There's a later story that refers to what Jeroboam did and how he ran the priest out. And uh, God's people were not welcome in the north. That's the 
that's the uh, the moral of this story. Forget that where it's highlighted red. Let's oops, wrong one. Let's get rid of that red highlight. It's just a red underline. He appointed priests from among the people. Look at verse thirty-two. First Kings twelve thirty-two. Jeroboam appointed a feast. Underline red. Jeroboam appointed a feast on the fifteenth day of the eighth month, like the feast that was in Judah. And he offered sacrifices on the altar. Um, so I'm going to read that. He offered sacrifices on the altar. All of these things are, are, are not authorized. God said, you, there's a way to do this. And every single piece of this story is the opposite of what God said to do. Let's jump down to verse 33. Verse 33 said, He went up to the altar that he made in Bethel on the 15th day in the 8th month. In the month. These are some key words that I want to see when I'm studying with somebody or preaching or teaching. In the month, listen to this, that he had devised from his own heart. So I can look at this story. I've got my Bible in front of me. And I look down at the page and I remember that God said to Jeroboam, if you will serve me, you can be king forever. And the very next story is this, this thing. What did Jeroboam do? He set up two calves in Bethel, in Dan. He put temples in the high places. He appointed priests from among the people. He appointed a feast. And all of this from, was, was from what he devised in his own heart. Uh, this is a good lesson all by itself. So here's the way that, here's the way that I'm going to do this on the screen. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to make a note next to the heading. Um, let's put a note in Engage the Word Notebook. This is what I actually see in the margin of my Bible next to this note. All capital letters. You can't just make stuff up! Exclamation mark. If you want to have a lesson that comes from this text, Whenever we're serving God, we can't just do whatever we feel like doing. We can't just say, oh, hey, God said to not make graven images, so I'm going to make two calves. God said to worship in Jerusalem, so I'm going to make some places in Danaba. You can't just make stuff up. If you're going to serve God, you have to serve God in the way that God said to serve God. You can't just make stuff up. And so I also have this because I'm, I'm preaching and teaching from my Bible. Uh, I got some bullet points, and I say... This is man-made religion. Um, sorry, that should not be a bullet point. The bullet point comes next. What is man-made religion? He got the who wrong. Uh, priest from among the people. Uh, he got the what wrong. We're going to worship these golden calves. He got the when wrong. Are not working out. He got the win wrong. He set up a feast uh, on, on the 15th day that he devised in his own heart. Um, he got the where wrong. He got the why wrong. Uh, the why is not because of devotion and service to God. The why is because of personal interest and fear. Uh, and he got the how wrong. Man-made religion. Who, what, when, where, why, and how. You can't just make stuff up. So God told Jeroboam, if you'll serve me and do what I said, you can be king. And then we come to this story and we say, oh man, Jeroboam did not do it. So jump down to the very last verse of chapter 13. 1 Kings 13 and verse 34. We're going to have a key verse that I want to jump off the page at me. And this thing became sin to the house of Jeroboam. Not just Jeroboam. He messed it up for everybody. This thing became sin to the house of Jeroboam. So as to cut it off. And to destroy it from the face of the earth. Yellow. The thing that Jeroboam did. Became sin. Two more things. And then we'll be done with this video. Chapter 14 and verse 10.
This is what Jeroboam said, uh, what God said to Jeroboam because of this. Therefore, behold, I will bring harm upon the house of Jeroboam, and I will cut off from Jeroboam every male, both bond and free in Israel, and will burn up the house of Jeroboam as a man burns up dung until it is gone. Um. I like to try and keep the highlights as minimal as I can in my Bible. So this is what I'm going to do in yellow. I will bring harm upon the house of Jeroboam and will cut off from Jeroboam every male. Yellow. God told him, if you'll serve me, you can go forever. But uh, he didn't. And so this is like part one. Part one is Jeroboam, your family's going to fall apart. Uh, the house of Jeroboam. If you want to make some kind of a lesson or study out of this, I know that's not what this is. This is supposed to be, um, this is supposed to be highlighting to navigate the Bible. But the highlighting and navigating the Bible is only to help me to get to these points. The point is, when we as parents decide to just make stuff up and do man-made religion instead of doing things the way that God said, it's not just me that I'm messing up. I'm messing up my whole family tree. And my kids and giving them a bad example. And I just, it's its such a painful thing. When you watch the, these parents who did their own thing while they were raising their kids, but they're a little bit older now and their kids have left the home and they've decided they want to come to the Lord and they want to serve the Lord. But the damage is done and they raise their kids and it's just so painful to watch those parents beg their kids to serve God and the kids don't want any part of it. Uh, that's what Jeroboam is about to experience. Your whole family is going to suffer because of the mistakes that you made. And then let's jump down to verse 15. I've got an option for you here. You can decide what you want to highlight in your Bible. It's not just the whole family who's going to suffer. It's the entire nation. Look at this timeline. See the three squiggly lines on the top part of that? That's the nation of Israel and the star that's an explosion at the end when Assyria blows up the northern kingdom of Israel. That explosion happens because of this sin that we're reading about right now. It takes 209 years to get there, but this is the cause of it. So read this with me. Verses 15 and 16. The Lord will strike Israel. That's not Jeroboam's family. That's the nation. The Lord will strike Israel as a reed is shaken in the water and root up Israel out of this good land that he gave to their fathers and scatter them beyond the Euphrates because they have made their Asherim, provoking the Lord to anger. And he will give Israel up because of the sins of Jeroboam, which he sinned and made Israel to sin. In my Bible, verses 15 and 16 are both highlighted. I think if I could go back in time, I'll just try and keep it minimal and to the point. So what I'm going to do on my screen is I'm going to highlight that in red because it has to do with Israel. And this is their fate. God will give Israel up because of the sins of Jeroboam, which he sinned and made Israel to sin. And since we're here, let's go ahead and do this now. I'm going to write where that happened um, in the Bible. This promise is fulfilled in 2 Kings 17.6. And I'm going to write this, Assyria. The nation of Assyria comes and destroys Israel. And we know the exact reason now because of the sins of Jeroboam. All throughout the, the kings of the north, the kings of Israel, we're going to say, he did this, and he did not depart from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who caused Israel to sin. It all starts right here. That's the reason why we took a little bit longer on this video. You need to know about that. Okay, so maybe I'll move a little bit faster. Maybe not, but maybe I'll move a little bit faster in some of the future videos. But now we have a divided kingdom and we need to move through the kings and who they were and what they did. Thanks for being with me.